Hey Herbal Nerd Society members! This is Candace Hunter here. I figured today you guys would probably really enjoy a little how-to on making herbal baking extracts. Back before like the 1800s, Queen Victoria's time frame, people throughout Europe and most of the world didn't have vanilla beans to work with. So vanilla was actually not standard as far as baking is concerned. So this holiday season, when I started baking my cakes and cookies, I got thinking about that. Vanilla prices have gone up, gone up and I kind of wanted to make some more interesting extracts and flavors for my bakes anyway. So then I thought, well, I'll do some experimentation. And I did, and it turned out absolutely wonderful. So I'm here to share it with you. The first one we're gonna make is going to be a calendula, or not calendula, a chamomile. Oh, let me pull up my little chamomile, chamomile flower extract. This one will have, this one's fresh. I got this, these fresh chamomiles here in the middle of November off of my indoor aeroponic garden. So that garden has been doing a lovely job of creating wonderful new herbal treats for me and the chamomile is one of them. For chamomile, it is a fresh herb, so we're going to be adding some 50% uh, alcohol to it, or 75%, 75% is for the fresh stuff. I've got mine measured out here. I have 10 grams of chamomile flowers, which comes out to about a third of an ounce fresh. And then right now I have 50 milliliters, as you'll see, of the alcohol. And I'm gonna pour that in. I'm going to probably use about 50 milliliters. You can go as little as a one to two extract. Oh, that's where I'm gonna, yeah, that was 45. I'm gonna go for the full 50. So I'm gonna just let those float in there. I'm gonna get a cover for this in a little bit. We'll cover it up and we'll just let it stand for one week. And then if I wanna use some dried herbals, another flavor I've really enjoyed would be rose petals or rose buds. I like the pink ones because I think they've got a stronger scent and they're really tasty. I love that smell. So for that one, we are going to be using um, we are going to be using 75% alcohol. I measured out uh, 20 grams of rosebuds, which is about two thirds of an ounce. And I've got 100 milliliters of alcohol, 50% alcohol, which comes out to, um, let me look at my note. It comes out to about four ounces. It's like three and a half ounces. So we're just gonna pour that in there. So the key, one of the keys for the rose petals is to make sure that they all get wet and stay wet. So I've got my little tamper here and I'm just gonna push those down. If I'm doing this in a canning jar, I'll probably push them down a few times to kind of just squish them just a little bit and break them up just a little bit. So these are going to stand also one week covered. After about one week, you're going to get what looks like this, glorious, Check that color out, dark color. You're gonna see some browns and similar tones in your alcohol. This one was started with the exact same alcohol that we just used to start the fresh, the one today, the pink one today. You're also gonna notice that the color has drained out of your herbs. So what we need to do today with this is strain it. Most of the time I put all of these types of extracts into a canning jar like this because it's very easy to close and they're easy to clean and they're quite sturdy. For this one today, I'm gonna use my um, muddler, my, my thing here to help just squeeze out, because you can do that right from in the jar, and I'm using a tiny canning jar here, so I can't catch all of it into the strainer and squeeze it in the strainer easily. The smell from this is just lovely. I can smell the roses floating. It's almost like walking through a summer garden. and you get less of the bitter and um, acrid scents, scents and flavors when you let them steep for just this short amount. This is not gonna be a medicinal strength, but it's gonna be absolutely delicious in your bakes. All right, I may try to squeeze a little tighter on that later, but for now, that's good. Squeeze out the last little bit there. Okay, 
So we have extracted just over 40 milliliters of um, herbal rose extract from that. And that comes out to being just a little bit over an ounce. I'm going to store it in this nice brown bottle. The brown bottles, just like you get your vanilla extract in, are good because they help prevent it from degrading and pr protect it from sunlight. As the weeks go by, like next week when I strain out the one that I just started today, I'm going to top off this jar with that. I'm also going to continue to use my herbal extracts in my baking. Does that. So the jar goes up and down, and then I've got my lovely label. There you go. So there is a lovely herbal extract. You can use these for baking in place of vanilla extract. If you'd like to learn more about using herbal extracts, get some ideas and inspiration for other herbs that make really good extracts, and figure out how to properly test your bakes before you fully commit to any given flavor, check out my article on The Practical Herbalist. Bye, herbal nerds!